So today I'm going to do a little build tutorial video on one of my DIY six stuff hexapod actuators and you'll see that it's actually not that complex, not that difficult and that anyone can do it. So here you go. Okay, so this is the actuator in pieces. I've already built it, so there's a few pieces that are still connected, but I'll run you through them. So you've got it's the universal joint at the bottom, the base plate, I guess. Um, it's mounted to a pillow ball um, square flange mount. Now, this was creating too much um, rotation on the actuator so I ended up putting a nut on the bottom of it and now that gets clamped bolted down to the frame once I've aligned my actuator then I tighten it down tight and it stops it from spinning but that way I can align the universal join up perfectly with the line of the actuator so it works out good it <laughs> worked good in the end but yeah we'll get back to that later on I guess um, this is just some heavy duty stormwater pipe, thick walled. Um, very, very strong. Like it's not your usual PVC. This, I can stand on this 100 kilos and it doesn't flex at all. It's, it's solid as a rock. So I have no problem trusting that. Um, this is an Igus style linear bearing for the top. Now it come, <laughs> I ordered them and they were double, it was double the length and it had two sleeves inside, but because of the extra length, you're gonna lose travel. So I ended up just hacksawing it, not the straightest hacksaw job, but I kept the one slide, it does the job nice. Aluminium from Alibaba. 3D printed parts, this is the top hat, this goes over the top of the tube. This is the bearing base plate, where the ball screw bearing gets mounted to. As you can see it's still mounted. Now that basically these two sandwich between the PVC pipe and the two aluminium rods sandwich it together and that stops it from being able to rotate and twist. All right. Now the aluminium tube is 8mm diameter with a 4mm ID and I've drilled and tapped it with an M5 bolt, so um, so at each end. So you can get the screws in to clamp. Um, I'll, I'll ignore these bits. These were a first prototype. They were gonna be like a, a end limit, end stop, just, uh, but I don't need them, but I just can't get them off <laughs> without getting the grinder out. They don't, they don't do anything in, affecting the performance of the actuator because I still get max travel. Um, this is the motor coupler spacer. So you can still access the coupler to tighten. Um, the motor is an ADST M02430. Very popular with like the SFX100 build. Um, but they use the 90ST mainly, but the ADST worked for me because my couplers I have were already too large for the 90ST shaft so the ADST has the, the larger shaft so that worked out good for me and they end up being like 50 US cheaper each so that, maybe not that much but pretty close it saved a lot of money actually getting the ADST I hear they are also better they got lower inertia than the 90ST, so it should be better response and all that, but that's just what I heard. I'll take it. Coupler is just an aluminium job. Now, it's a plate coupler, very high quality actually. Got this from AliExpress as well, so that worked out good. Um, to suit the new actuators, I had to 
just machine out one end, two mil to fit the new shaft and which is good to go. Now what else we got? Now, I guess the final thing is the shaft, the ball screw, sorry. Now, in attaching the ball screw, I've just got some steam pipe actually, and the steam pipe fitted perfectly. It was one mil ID bigger than the carbon tube and it fitted perfectly over there, so I just had to lathe, machine out this end to 29 mil, I think, one mil bigger than the ball screw, and I've used some 3M epoxy, pretty high quality stuff, um, to just, yeah, f epoxy it in. At the end, just got like a brass, I mean, a, a threaded bush, I don't know what you call it, insert, and that's also epoxied in, and, um, so once this is together, there's really, it's a throwaway item if you've damaged your ball screw, like the um, bearings come out or anything like that, it's, yeah, it's not the best design, but to buy a ball screw and the carbon rod is about, I don't know, 35 US, so it's not the end of the world. And then you have your slider, and this basically slides up the two aluminium tubes, it stops the backlash from going forward and back motion, which will put stress on your rose joint. If you're actuated to go forward and back and it's kicking like this, this is gonna be smashing left and right and that'll eventually wear this out, probably cause a failure. So having the slider slide up and down the rails, which also have the clamping force for the whole top hat, it um, yeah keeps a nice linear movement without the twisting works well and the bottom I've just fitted a, a little o-ring and that's just like a soft bump stop so when it auto calibrates and it runs down using the Thanos controller it will come down touch the the base detect zero and motors calibrated just stops yeah any potential damage to the the printed part, I guess, just a bit of a softer touchdown. Um, whether it does anything or not, I'm not too sure, but it's there. Now, yeah, what else is there? Pretty much it, really. Now, obviously, first thing you want to do is mount your slider to your ball screw. Pretty straightforward, four bolts, countersunk, so you don't touch this when it goes to calibrate you want them sort of hidden away um, well ideally you probably want to mount the, the the screw to your bearing that way you can put the nut on tighten it up and you can hold the other end of the the rod with some vice grips or something but because this is off an, uh, an old design, I have to reuse it. Now, it's a little tricky trying to get the, the tightness on the nut here. So I'll show you a little trick I've used to achieve that. That's probably going to be the first thing we do. Um, so once you've got your, your bearing mounted to your base plate here and your slider on, I'm going to go and mount this. now. Down. So the end nut has a little grub screw in the end of it. So once you've got it on tight, you wind the grub screw in and that should pin a thread, hopefully, and just assist in stopping it from coming off. All right. So once we've got this on, Some of the um, ball screws, this uh, shaft doesn't quite go through all the way. You want to make sure that it's it's really oh, sorry. You want to make sure that it's really butted up 
to the end where it can go here. It, it's quite easy to think that it's all the way because it gets real tight. But what I've had to do in the past is unwind the screw a bit. I put a rubber, a leather glove, leather glove around here, like a rigger's glove, put it in a vise, like so. And then I found a, a socket big enough just to fit around the bearing and obviously clear the 3D printed part and then hammer it down and bring it home. And then you can work on tightening it. Um. I don't know if this is the right size. No, it's, of course it's not. Should we get some pieces out of the way? Yeah. Okay, so what I figured out is the drill is probably the best. The, the chuck, because it's got your three fingers, it's going to evenly grab the shaft. The shaft is pretty soft. Now it does create a couple burrs. Um, so ideally you want to be able to grab the other end of the shaft with some vice grips. I wouldn't use vice grips on here, that would just literally, it, it would tear that, that, that steel apart. So what I've ended up doing is I put the drill in reverse. And I just nip it up. Make sure your drill's on as strong as it can go. Whoop. Okay, watch that. Now, even with a drill, you do get slight burr. Now, what you want to do later is we want to make sure this is going to slide over there. So, you get a small file or some emery paper. Just smooth any, any, any burrs that come up. Um, unfortunately, it's only the, the easiest, only easiest way I can figure out how to do this without, obviously, well, you, I can't dismantle this, so it's a sealed unit now. Obviously, if you, if you designed a coupler here that was 3D printed um, and you had it all bolted together, then yeah, you could dismantle this, grab the other end and hold it while you tighten that nut. Now, fortunately, I don't have that... Um, Luxury. And then we want to, before we forget, we just want to tighten that grub screw up. Extra fail safe, I guess. Yeah. It's not, so nice and tight. Now I'm just gonna get a file. You're only just taking the, the burrs off. mounted. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, so next we want to put a, assemble our top hat. Now that's essentially the top half of the actuator. First thing we want to do is get our aluminium rods, put them in both sides, like so. Now we got some pan head screws, fairly long, I think they're 25 mil, 30 mil, 35 mil. <laughs> 25 mil. Right there. 
this area. Probably best to just make sure all your your tube fits in your 3D printed parts. Nice, get them get them worked. A bit bit looser before you start assembly. Otherwise, everything is real tight and it can be a right pain in the ass. So I find where we go on here. I find if it's all ready to go and everything fits together, it should all go together like a breeze quite easily. Now you don't really want to have too short of a, a thread here because this, these, these four bolts, two at each end, is basically what's clamping the, the top tube section together tight now. And it's, it is aluminium, so an aluminium thread is a lot softer to, yeah, obviously, just softer in general. So the longer thread you got, the more thread you can pick up and the stronger, more force you can put against that thread as well, yeah. Okay, so you've got the slider running like so. The two screws here and here, they're all countersunk. These ones don't worry me too much because they don't go past where I'm gonna mount my coupler up anyway. So I could dock them a little shorter, or, but that's the only size they had in the shop at the time. So make do with it. You just gotta remember with these bolts, you want them a socket head cap screw, or if in my case I can only get Phillips head, so so they sit inside the bearing housing. Otherwise, if they stick out, another thing that's going to catch is this when it comes to calibrate. So you want this whole surface to be just smooth and flat. That way, when it calibrates, there's nothing to bind up, and the whole thing will work a lot better. Yeah. Okay, so we've got those two in now. It's a pretty crucial part because if you don't put these in now, it's going to be a right pain in the ass. But these are the the nuts that the motor get bolted up to. So you put them in now. Oops, what I want to do. Like so. Now, you can see those nuts just sitting there. You could probably a bit of super glue or something if you really wanted to. Um, they are a bit loose. Or the printer tolerance could be, <laughs> the file could be made a bit better, I guess. Now, you slide the tube over top. Now, if you notice, the aluminium tube is not the exact length of the PVC pipe. It's actually a few mil. You can see that? Yep, a few mil shorter. If that was the exact same length, then you might get, the aluminium might stretch a little bit and you're not gonna get the proper clamping force. You're just gonna bottom out with your top hat to the PVC pipe. You're gonna get so much strength and then the whole thing will still be able to swivel. So you really want a few mil shorter on the aluminium tube, and that way it, you know it is actually clamping up nice and tight. Okay, I'll be back in a sec, because I forgot something. Um, this makes this a bit a lot easier. Now, what we want to do is we want to put the top hat. The top hat has the four, the M4 nuts. Now they're actually pressed in nice and tight. So later when we screw the linear bearing on top, we don't have to get inside with a, a spanner to hold them. So that works really good. You might want a bit of super glue if they're loose, just to hold them there. Now, we want to line the aluminum tube up with this side. It can be tricky. 
But I have a solution for that. We want to drop the hat on. I've got a couple bits of M5 rod laying around. Now we want to get through, pick up the aluminium rod, one on each end. Now they can use, be used as locators, so when we get it closed, you can pull these through, line it up nice and easy, and then once they're in, and you've seated the top, you can undo this, and you'll see it's now home. We can put our screws in. Might get something that makes this a little, a little easier. Just a little quicker. Alright, tight this one. Now before we tighten it really tight, we want to align this with this. Just do it by eye, it doesn't have to be spot on, but as long as that is in line, that means you know your aluminium tube inside is running straight and it's not twisted. If you've shifted this, you know, 40 degrees, then that rod's going to be all twisted inside and as the actuator goes up and down the ball screw it's going to rotate like so you know so you just want it to be a nice straight up and down but I'm um, pretty happy with that and do it down tight beauty of having those long screws and the long thread is you can get them pretty tight. Now, you can want to check the bottom again, make sure they're tight. They're not going anywhere. I've done 50 hours on this actuator and they were still rock solid tight when I pulled this apart just now. So, that's nice. Um, now, to finish the top hat off, all we've got to do, slide the linear bearing over. Put the four bolts in. And you don't want to push too hard when doing this because if you push one of those nuts on the inside out, you can pull it all apart again. <laughs> we don't want to do that now. I should also mention that before putting it together, you want to um, make sure your ball, ball screw's greased up. This one's missing a grease nipple because I've actually lost one, so I've got five between six actuators and I just keep having to swap them around, but um, i just got to get down to the shops to buy a new one one of these days, but it's definitely greased, don't worry about that. And the aluminium tube, I do put a light coating of PTFE spray on it, grease, lubricant, whatever you want to call it, dry PTFE lubricant. I'll show you a can in a second. You can bring these up nice and tight. Don't have to be too tight, but that's it. Now yeah, yeah, rose joint, pillow ball mount, whatever you call them in your country. I call them rose joint because that's what we call them on our cars in the Japanese community, JDM. 
and um, yeah, so we'll adjust that later when we put it on the rig. But that, what's that? Anyway, that is your um, whole top hat complete. Now, we're gonna mount the bottom half to it, which is the motor and the base plate. So, now, it can get a little tricky. It's not too bad. So because of the, the motor, it doesn't have much clearance here or here, to put like a nut on here first and clamp this to the top hat, it's pretty much impossible. You can't get anything on the end there to hold that nut, especially when you've got a threaded rod running through. So I've used some stainless tubing, 100, 160 mil long, and it's pretty high duty. It's actually instrument tubing. They use it in um, the industry, I guess. Um, so it's, it's very strong stuff. I cut four lengths of that. And that basically gets sandwiched like so. Holds the motor, sandwiches the motor spacer to the motor. Get rid of some of this stuff. So what we've got, usually these rods aren't in here, they're, they're, that's just, it's a tight fit so I screwed them in. You can drill this out so they can slide freely, just makes life a lot easier, but I can't be bothered pulling them out and drilling them, so they're all ready to screw up. In this sense, you want to put your motor coupler onto your motor, keep it all loose. So you want this all loose. And once you've put it onto your top hat, keep it loose until you've bolted the whole lot up and then it aligns itself and then look at securing the, the coupler. Otherwise, if you secure the coupler now and it's a little on the piss, you're gonna have potentially a hard time getting it on the end here. But also, it could be, if you do get it on, it could have the, the coupler flexed and that is gonna just put a lot of strain on this coupler especially when it's doing 3,000 RPM backwards and forwards all day long. It won't last long at all. So you just want to make sure assembly's as straight as you can be, I guess. So in this instance, usually I would have these rods out and I could just butt this up. But I'm going to have to run these through the motor, like so. All right, make sure, you should test all this, make sure the 3D printed part fits over the, the circular flange on the motor before you go <laughs> getting to the stage and wondering what the hell's going on or if you go to pull it tight, it might crack the, the printed part. Okay, now what we want to do, line it up. This is the bit where you're going to think I'm a little dodgy because I really am a little dodgy. But we want to try to screw these threads in, pick up the nut up here on all four. You don't want them to come out too far, it's just going to look ugly, so just try to get them flush for now. They get a bit tight because there is plastic and you know, it picks up plastic on the way through and carries it on through the thread on the nut at the end. Can get a little um, a little tight, so I use these multi grips. But you you're going to damage the thread, so don't go screwing it down here because we need this thread to be intact. But this is all galvanized, so the galvanized is a bit crappy as well. So it's actually the thread's quite. It's quite rough. It's just cheap threaded rod from Bunnings. But, um, so, it's not the best. 
I guess if you got some nice stainless stuff, this would all just screw in a lot nicer. Alright. So now, all you want to do, get your four spacers, slot them over. Four nuts. Now, at the moment, the motor's just resting there. But, um, I'll just turn this down so I just nip these up. It's just easier. I don't want to do it up with a rattle gun. You might, you could snap a rod, could pull some plastic off, um, and and you get a better feel for torque going through your ratchet anyway. Make sure. Everything's butted up nice. Now, that motor's on tight as it is. These are holding it in position. And, and that's good. But, obviously, you do have a bit of flex in these. And that all goes away when we bolt the last plate on. This is the base plate. Um, now I'm just going to check with my other motors which way I had the universal joint. Alright. So that's exactly right there. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I'll get my head out of the way. Cool. And then... This plate just gets sandwiched between. Sandwiched between those two nuts. Might want to check the torque of these ones for the wrong one. in my dining table here but it's all right it's used for all my projects and it's already scratched up enough so whatever and there you have it that's the whole actuator built now the final thing to do is to line up to just tighten this coupler so basically slide it up a bit so you you're grabbing a bit more of the ball screw shaft and um, hopefully if you've loosened it enough it should just slide up some can get a little it's loose it's loose yeah. I know this is on a bit tight so I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver and just try to pry it up a bit Like so. Make sure it's not touching the the screws at the top. I just like to keep it a nice bit of distance. Give it a good spin so it sort of self aligns itself. Alright. Now we should be right. Tighten this bad boy up. Okay. 
This is the only one that arrived from China without a. <laughs> it was missing one of the grub screws, so I've just got a normal. Still gonna use the big one in there. Let's tie it. Now, oops, get all this stuff out of the way. Now, if you rotate this, if all goes well, you should get your shaft going up and down. And as you can see, maybe not. Movement, beautiful. And there you have it. One fully built custom DIY actuator. And I've done, the, the actual reason, <laughs> I was looking to pull this apart. I heard a noise, just a slight rattle every now and then, and I wasn't sure. I wanted to do a build video anyway, um, so I thought oh, it'd be a good idea just to pull this one apart, just to see if I could notice anything. It might have just been a dodgy, like a sloppy ball screw. And then last night I had to hit the e-stop. Um, I was on a set of Corsa, and I was on a Shotoku Express, and it's half. It's not really complete, and I took the wrong turn. I ended up falling off the map because I hadn't finished that road yet, and I was just flying through the air, and the whole rig was just going crazy so instead of forcing it offline which I should have done I actually hit the e-stop and the whole rig come crashing down and what it done that rattling noise turned out to be the nut on the base on the back of the the ball screw that holds it onto the bearing and that had actually come loose so when it come crashing down it popped the whole ball screw out of the coupler so um, so yeah that shifted up and down so it actually worked out good that I pulled it apart, found the problem, it wasn't anything major and it was just a simple put the screw back on, make sure it's tight. This was the first one I put together so as I got through the actuators I did get a little better at assembling them so maybe I did miss a couple things. I noticed the grub screw on the nut wasn't done up so I obviously forgot to do that and I think that's come loose and the grub screw probably would have saved it from coming loose in the long term um, but now it's back on grab screw on you all get a video of how it gets assembled everyone's happy there you go well i hope you enjoyed that any questions leave them down below and like and subscribe if you want to see more thank you